morning everyone so today is february 6th so it is the super bowl weekend and if you haven't realized i'm so enamored by football that i just can't wait but i will probably watch it just because of the beautiful commercials however this brings me to what book will i be reading during the super bowl because yes and I decided I could not wait any longer. This weekend, hopefully the weekend, I'm going to pick up Six of Crows by Leah Bordugo. I have not read this book yet. I believe the only Leah Bordugo I've read was the Shadow and Bone trilogy, which was years and years ago. And I remember liking it. It wasn't my all time favorite series, but it was enjoyable. Oh. I take this back. I read The Ninth House by Leah Bordugo, and that was absolutely phenomenal. But I've heard nothing but good things about Six of Crows, which makes me nervous because I feel like the hype is going to be way up here and my level of enjoyment is going to be way down here. So we'll see. But I feel like I'm the only one who has not picked this book, or I guess duology, up. And I think it's about time. From my understanding, there's a heist, a good group of friends, and that's about it. I should probably know more about this book. But my plan this weekend is to get through at least this book, if not the sequel. And I am excited. I have to admit, not a fan of this little Netflix sticker cover thing. I mean, it's not even this book. It's the Shadow and Bone trilogy that's coming to Netflix. So I'm a little mad that that's there, but I digress. No, but this morning is basically going to be me trying to warm up for my run this morning. Love it, but it's so cold outside. And probably preparing a pot roast for dinner tonight and some snacks for tomorrow during the Super Bowl. Oh, and I need to film a video. Okay, I'm a little busier than I thought I was. But either way, I will check back in with you when I have finished some of Six of Crows. everybody. Today is Sunday the 7th. The 7th. And I did read a bit more this morning. Last night I finished part one of Six of Crows and this morning I finished part two. So I'm about, what, a third through right now? And I have to say it's really good right now. I really enjoy how Bardugo is introducing all the characters and I like that the point of view also changes between the characters. She doesn't just lay out all of their history and that's something I really enjoy because I'm reading more and more because I'm more excited I guess to read about the characters histories, who they are, what they've done, what they want to do in the future and also just finding out what this world is. I know I said I read the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Leah Bardugo, but that was years and years ago. And so I don't remember everything that happens. And I know reading this book, it's in the same universe, I believe, because there's a lot of similarities between some of the characters in this series and some in the Shadow and Bone series. For instance, they had the Grisha, Gresha people. And I know that was a, that was the main part of the Shadow and Bone trilogy. But again, I'm, I'll have to go back and reread it. Honestly, this book is making me want to reread Shadow and Bone just because I feel like I'm maybe not missing anything, but it makes me want to reread it to see what the exact connection between these two series is. So we'll see. We'll see. But let's get 
back to Six of Crows, I am intrigued. I don't know how Bardugo is really pulling this off, but there's this huge heist, right? I have to go to the Ice Palace, Ice City. Ah, the Ice Court. I'll get it right eventually. And I guess rescue a person, I think that's my understanding, or we'll see, we'll see. But they have to rescue this person from the ice court and it's this huge heist and I'm, that the whole story is supposed to evolve around it. But I'm less curious about the heist and I'm more curious about the people. And she just does a really good job of I guess making a connection between them because you have people in this world that know each other or know of each other and they're all coming together as six to complete this heist from my understanding and so you have the distrust you have the revenge plots you have the the friendships the lovers the haters all of that's going on in this group of six Jealousy, always jealousy. And then you have this splash of what? Let's go with magic that also either ties or breaks these relationships. What can I say? I'm really enjoying it. And I don't know if it's living up to the hype yet. Because I don't see the relationship that I've always been told. It's such a great friend group. It's amazing. It's I can see the development to it, but I haven't gotten there yet. But I'm still only a third through. So my plan today, besides reading more of this book, I'm hoping to get through two more parts. So get through two thirds of this book before the day ends. I also have a meeting with Amy to discuss 100 Years of Solitude. We'll see how that goes. And then, of course, you have the Super Bowl that starts at, what, 3.30 my time? So in about three hours or so. It'll be a fun day. But I will check in with you later when I have finished more of Six of Crows and have more to talk about. Have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you soon. day but I wanted to update you I did end up finishing six of crows yesterday pretty late at night and I really enjoyed it I won't say it's my favorite book of all time but you definitely fall in love with the characters completely by the end of the book and it's a character driven book even though you have a pretty hefty plot point to follow and of course I haven't finished Crooked Kingdom yet but I assume that this is a really good story to have in two parts I don't think I'd want another 500 pages onto this guy however I have to admit I you get a lot of background information on most of the main characters the only one that I think could have been developed a little bit more is Wayland, I think his name is. Wayland. The only one I think could have been developed a little bit better 
is Waylon. You don't get too much of his backstory and you don't even get a chapter from his perspective throughout this whole book. But nevertheless, I loved how each character was introduced. I think I updated you when I was a third through. So like the second, or I guess it'd be the third and fourth parts really gave a lot of background to each character. And I love that the book made you wait that long for everything to really be established. And then you get to learn the characters a lot more and their relationships with each other. So a decent read. I think I am going to give it a 4.5 because I did really enjoy each character. I love the relationships and the heist in itself was really fun to read. I mean, the last, what, 100 pages, it really is a non-stop book. You just have to keep turning the pages. There's no way you could stop. Just saying. But in saying that, today I did start Crooked Kingdom. I got through part one, which is really tiny. And what I was lacking with Waylon in this one, I thought Bardugo really delivered, at least in part one. You do get a chapter in Waylon's point of view and you get to see more inside his head. And then of course, with things that have happened, you are really expediated like a couple days later, maybe even the next day on what each character is doing as a result of this book ending. So it, it's really nice to pick up the book right back to back, just because this is ending on a very abrupt cliffhanger. And I feel like starting the next book was a no brainer to just get it out of the way. So I'm hoping to do a lot more reading tonight, but we will see. And I will just update you again later. So yesterday was kind of a bust. I had gone into school to meet some children, which is always, so I miss them. I miss them. But because of that, I was at school for uh, like 11 hours just because of things that had to happen. Was it 11? Might've been nine. Let's go with nine and then two hours to get there and back. Let's go with that, because that sounds more reasonable. But because of that, I did not get a chance to read last night, which was unfortunate, but life again. But today, I did read the second part of Crooked Kingdom. It's not quite one third, because there's still six parts, but hey, it works, right? I enjoy it right now. There's a lot of things that I'm wondering where Bardugo is going to take this book. And I could see it going a couple of different ways, but it's just, again, introducing things, keeping the plot going, so on and so forth. One thing that I thought was interesting that has nothing to do with the plot, but, ooh, you can see it. I noticed that this book has the feathers kind of highlighted and what shiny and then i looked at six of crows and they did the same thing but with silver instead of gold and i was not expecting that so very happy it's the little things you know but back to the plot i enjoy how she ends each part and especially compared to part one to part two in Crooked Kingdom, you definitely have a significant event that ends each part. And like I said, I'm really curious to see how Bardugo takes this book. And I'm hopeful. Again, very character driven. There's a couple more characters. Waylon gets a perspective in this book. I think I already mentioned that. But 
we'll see. I'm hoping to get another part done, part three. It would be part three, right? Math. Yeah. Wow. Part three, which would get me about halfway through the book or so. So we'll just have to see what happens. I will check in with you later. Hi, how's it going? It's a little late at night on Wednesday, the 10th. I got my dates right. I have a crazy bun going on, but you know, life. But I wanted to check back in with Crooked Kingdom. I ended up finishing two parts, so I'm about to start part four, part five. And I just want to discuss. I'm liking how this story is going, to be honest. I love how we have a lot more depth to Waylon and Jas Jasper. Jasper? Jasper. I love how they introduced more characters, particularly Jesper's dad, I thought gave him very, a, a lot more humanity, at least. And then, I don't know, I'm curious to see what the relationship between all, f let's go six or seven characters will be, because we as the reader know Kaz's backstory. However, Everyone else doesn't. And of course, his love interest doesn't as well. And she wants more than what Kaz can currently give her. So it's just very... It's a very interesting dynamic right now. And I mean, there's not there's not too much of the story left. So I'm really curious to see how Bardugo will kind of wrap this whole story up with a little bow. I don't know. I like Nina's new powers. I think one of the quotes was somewhere along the lines like, the drug brought her to too close to death and she might have brought death back for with her. It was just, it's a very interesting quote. I find myself a little disappointed in myself for not tabbing this book or Crooked this is Crooked Kingdom, or Six of Crows, just because there's a lot of like little dialogues or little instances where I think it really shows who the character is. And it's basically beautifully written. And to not have it tabbed, I'll never be able to remember them. I just come across a line or two and I'm like, oh, that was really great. And then I don't have my tabs with me. But that's my fault, and that just gives me motivation to reread these books with my tabs close by. Maybe not anytime soon, though. I have a lot of books that I need to read. I don't know if you can see them. Nope, you can't see them if I move. Life. I don't know what else to talk about without completely ruining the books. I really am enjoying the adventure. Like, for the first book, for instance, I wasn't as enamored by the heist as I was with the characters. And this book, I'm a lot more excited about how their adventure is going to pay out, plus the development of all of the characters and, of course, the relationship. So, I don't know. It'll, it'll be very interesting as I continue. But for now, I'm probably going to go to bed, maybe watch some YouTube, and I'll save the rest of my reading for tomorrow. And hopefully I can update you how I thought the ending went for these books. And then maybe my overall take on the Six of Crows duology by Leah Verdugo. So we'll just see. I hope you have a wonderful night and I will see you tomorrow.
Okay, so I finished Crooked Kingdom a couple of hours ago. So that means the duology is officially done. I don't know if I would count these books as some of my all-time favorites, especially after finishing them and reading both of them. Don't get me wrong. Like everyone said, the characterization is absolutely wonderful in this book. The development of each character, the relationships between all of them, and how they work together. And it's certainly a character-driven book, at least that first one. And it is packed with action, adventure, heists, all that good stuff. However, I found myself wanting almost more from the series, even though it did give a lot considering it was just two books. But I really felt like some of the things that happened in the second book were a little too convenient for the characters and everything just fell into place for them. And I, it just might be me where I need my characters to suffer a bit more, I don't know, to or my characters to at least earn the ending that they get. And again, don't get me wrong, these characters suffer, there's quite a bit of drama, that ending was, hmm. but I just don't think this is going to be one of my favorite books. Don't get me wrong, I stand by my 4.5 rating of Six of Crows, and I think... I'm going to give Crooked Kingdom a four. So still great ratings, still highly rated, but I just don't see myself. <laughs> Sorry, I think you can hear the wind in the background. Ooh, that was a branch that just fell. Not good. Sorry, it's an interesting evening. But I just don't see myself picking these books up every month or even every year. I'll probably reread it again in the future. And so that's why I'm really glad that I have this. It was beautifully written. That's without a doubt. Like I said, I think in a previous clip, I really wished I had tabbed these books just because of all the great lines, great advice, honestly, that is good advice just outside the book as well. Thinking on it, I think part of the reason I wasn't fully invested in these books is it is a YA fantasy. So some of the things are unrealistic, of course, I mean, fantasy. But at the same time, I felt like this story in itself and these characters it could have been more. Like, it could have been more gruesome. It could have been more horrific. It, it could have been an adult story. And I think that is one of the reasons why people love it so much, is that it was a more adult version than some other YAs. And they probably read it when they were younger. I mean, this book was published... Oh gosh, does it tell me? The published date. 2015, so five years ago. So I don't know if that actually holds up. I don't know. I'm trying to make sense of it, and it just might be me who is not in love with these books. And again, I say that with the caveat that I did really enjoy the story. Just not my favorite, as it seems to be a lot of people's. And that is okay. I did end up ordering, what was it called? The Shadow and Bone Trilogy, because I'm very curious to see the connection. I think I started this vlog saying that I read that years and years ago. And in Crooked Kingdom, you can definitely see the connection between this series and Shadow and Bone. It's very clear. And I wish I'd read Shadow and Bone or reread it 
before I picked up this guy because I think I would have liked some of the tidbits that are in Crooked Kingdom a little bit more. But I'll just do it in reverse. It's fine. But I am going to wrap up this reading blog. Good books. I do suggest them if you haven't picked them up yet. I was very weary of picking them up and I'm really glad I did at the end. So I suggest Six of Crows duology to anyone who hasn't and it is worth it. That's all I'm gonna say. You have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you all next time. Bye.